Hello everyone, can we hear me? Am I coming through loud and clear? Just let me know in the chat if I've connected now and I'm actually live with you guys. Uh, unfortunately, we've had a uh, some catastrophic technical difficulties. Um, it, it, Bose just sent me a message saying his computer's completely crashed even after a hard reset. Um, and he may have to reschedule if he can't figure this out. Or maybe give us a call in on his mobile phone instead. Perhaps we can do it through that. Um, but in the meantime, I'm waiting for Bo to figure that out, and I've got the Zoom chat just open there, waiting for him to connect with me. And we'll see what we can do. Um, I think he may just be coming through, so let me just check if this is a uh, this is Bo coming through loud and clear. Bo, can you hear me? Much, much better. I think. Uh, okay, right. Let me just connect the sound here. Right, guys, we've we've got him through. Let me just uh, share the audio. Bo, how are we doing? Doing fantastic, Paul. Thank you for so uh, thank you so much for your patience and for having me on. Um, I wanted to do it on the desktop, but I think I'm going to have to buy a new one. <laughs> I'm doing this from the phone, so we'll just make it work. Yeah, fair enough, fair enough. So let me just share the screen with you guys. There we go. They can see both of us talking now. Excellent. But no, uh, the, the image looks way better and the sound sounds uh, way better as well. So maybe you should do this more often on your phone, to be, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. No. Seems pretty good. Yeah, well, it's good to have you here, Bo. I mean, what has it been now? Four months, five months since our last show? It's been a long time. Yeah, yeah, I believe it, it was Vicky Joy Anderson who connected us. Uh, she she told you about uh, some guy with a crazy idea and you should get him on your podcast and you graciously had me on to talk about clowns for, for a couple of hours. <laughs> and uh, Which, uh, thank you, by the way. And I figured, you know what, I'm going to... On my own podcast, which I've had for a while, this weekly truth or therapy session, I've, I decided to reach out to all the people who've had me on their podcasts and see if they'll be gracious enough to join me on mine and just have a bit of a, a conversation about all things conspiracy. And here you are. So thank you very much for joining me, Bo. Uh, just if you, if you don't know what this is, um, my audience will be more familiar. This is a, a laid back conversation about the truther's journey, if you get what I mean, about your individual journey, about how, you know, what, what got you here, basically, and we can have a bit of a back and forth, you know, about uh, what it's like to wake up and the pitfalls along the way, and, you know, I think people like to hear that story being told, because we can all relate, we're all in this together, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's one of those topics, you know, conspiracy that can, that can definitely send you into a certain, state of mind and it, some people don't necessarily always get out of it and i'm hoping these therapy sessions can help people you know pull themselves out of the deep rabbit holes they found them in so um if you don't mind me just starting with this bow do you want to share with my audience just who you are exactly and what it is you do and then we'll uh, we'll take it from there explained monsters and paranormal um, so what I do every week, I'll bring a guest on, um, let them explain their experiences, their personal encounters. Uh, if it's with, you know, a Bigfoot sighting or an alien abduction or demonic activity, whatever the case may be, um, they come on, share their experiences. And, uh, we, we do get into the world of conspiracy here and there. I've had probably, I don't know. 225 plus episodes so far on the show and i would say a couple of dozen go into the conspiracy realm and uh it's something that's been near and dear to my heart you know it's been uh, I'm, I'm steeped in it but i don't often bring it into the show um i've been awake a truther i guess you'd say since since i was still in the air force oh, honestly uh it's probably 2007 2008 i started getting into it um some of the guys opened my eyes that I worked with, you know, about things like, you know, they, they fed it to me easy. You know, we started with nine 11 and worked from there. And now, you know, you, you look back, you, you kind of go through those black pill moments where you just kind of get hopeless, you know, and then, mm. uh, then you find that it kind of leads to a, uh, a spiritual journey, you know, all that, everything ties together. I, I, I like talking about this stuff, man. So I don't want to get ahead of the game here. Let's just, uh, <laughs> the yeah. podcast, I'm I'm on all platforms. Been around for almost four years now, so that's come right. find. Me. That's right. And there was a bit of a sound issue there. It's my fault. I, I I forgot to unmute your mic, so they missed the <laughs> first few sentences. But uh, just to clarify, the Bump Podcast is what Bo runs. 
links are all in the description for this video and um, vibes our moderator has just posted it in the chat as well if you want to go check out his um like i said he's been doing this for a while he has hours and hours of content there over 200 episodes going way back and for what, for what i saw actually um I, I quickly skimmed through your instagram and it looked like you posted that you're you're actually rising up the ranks as well the uh, podcast is doing quite well isn't it yeah it's doing pretty good um most weeks i land somewhere in the uh I put my, my show in like the natural sciences category. It's just a good, it's a good spot to be in. Yeah. It's in, uh, you know, like Wes Germer's show and Tony Merkel's show. And I usually sit somewhere around number 40, 38, 40 in there. Um, this last couple of weeks, it's, it's had a drop the last couple of weeks. And I think uh, I stirred something in the uh, spiritual realm that I shouldn't have. Well, or, not that I shouldn't have, but I'm I'm facing some repercussions for some topics I got into. Is the way I look at it, anyway. Oh, um, what topic? Yeah, was that? Got... what topic was that? Share. <laughs> well, I don't heard your show too, but but we got into the topic of uh, Lilith and the, these these queens of demons and their true origins, what they are, who they are, and um, I got a little bit of pushback from some. Uh, from some listeners, and then I think I had a a coven of witches. I think has come against my show. I'm not even exaggerating. Um, to try to you know do what they do. I don't know. They're trying to hex the show or something. But it has it, it has hit it in the in the ranks. You know, I get some some odd emails and I get some uh, some odd friend requests, and I, I I see what's going on. But it's uh, it's interesting, man. It's interesting <laughs> how it all, it's real. You know, the reality of it all. It is a gang, gang stalking covens of witches are not something I'm, I'm uncommon. <laughs> I don't, I'm familiar with. You know, it's um, it comes with the territory. Unfortunately, you talk about the enemy; they're gonna they're gonna push back in whatever pathetic, weak, demonic way they can. And um, you know, if all that all that's happening is you're taking a slight hit in the rankings. That's that's good. That's not a big deal. And again, no <laughs> we, no weapon formed against us will prosper. You know, at the end of the day. And uh, if anyone's listening, let's pray for Bo and let's uh, let's fight back with prayer on this one. You know. That's all we can do. Um, but yeah, you know, that's... I would like to come on your podcast again, actually, and maybe talk about other subjects other than the clowns, because, you know, like I said, I'm a bit of a scattershot conspiracy theorist myself. But uh, what have you actually been talking about more recently um, that's really caught your attention in the conspiracy world? Because there's all sorts of topics available right now for people to focus on. But I'm just curious for you as a creator and someone who sits and listens to content creators, come onto your show share their viewpoint and then obviously next week it's somebody else with a completely different topic isn't it what's caught your attention most what is it about conspiracy theories that you like to get your teeth into the most do you have like a favorite oh froze up i i do have some favorite stuff um it, it's kind of fitting that at and crashed so hard uh, we had like what eighty thousand outages or something here in the United States last week. Um, my long-standing conspiracy theory is that there would be an uh, an attack on our power grid. You know this fragile power grid they've they've talked about forever, and mm. you know that it would be under the guise of an, an electromagnetic pulse, and you know then you know one thing would lead to the another where we're all getting on the uh, the cattle cars, right, <laughs> and heading out of here. Hmm. That, that's been a long-standing theory and um it's just odd at how fragile um you you, you can actually see that things are like i said we had I, I don't know if it happened you know overseas or not but here in the states last week we had an outage of at&t and that had a trickle-down effect with other cell providers and stuff and it just crashed our inter our our, our phones. Everything went to SOS mode. Nothing worked. You couldn't text out. Couldn't get calls. And I'm a teacher, so I'm at the high school, and I see the reaction, and it's like shock and awe with these kids, and with their uh, the the people that are in the whole community. Everybody's like, "What's going on?" You know, and how fast people panic. Um, and you know what happens when people. You know, when, when you panic or when you have fear, uh, you know, an anxiety raises. Um, thankfully, it come out 
you know, within a day or two, everything's fine. But that little glimpse shows you just how fast your world changes when you, when you don't have those comforts. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I, I get into thinking about what if the power went out or what if this grid went down, uh, what would we do? And that, that's, that's been on my mind for probably 15 years. And so I surround myself with books. Um, I, I've went the route of where I live in a very backwoods kind of area. Um, we have another home that we can go to with a farm, uh, hun- about a hundred acres, just kind of out of the way, a couple of cabins, um, just to be away from everything. If something would happen, we could go fall back with that family. And well, I think we'd be fine, but I, I run through those scenarios. I was actually talking to a buddy before we started the show, um, about the exact same thing. He, uh, he, he's talking about how he, he preps, you know, it, it, it's got such a bad name now to call yourself a prepper or whatever, but he, he preps for very similar situations, you know, and we get into it like um, from a biblical standpoint, if I don't know how anybody stands here on, you know, pre-tribulation versus, you know, post-tribulation rapture and all that. But if we have to go through um, apocalyptic scenarios before we are taken up what are we going to do right um how do you hang on and so we 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 discuss these kind of things like you know do you do you focus on like fortifications do you do you focus on uh self-defense do you try to you know do you look at rebuilding do you just sit there and, and try to pray through it uh it's a very interesting, very interesting thing. And to keep this more in the common vein, I see things that speak to end times prophecy. I'm not real big into end times prophecy. Um, I'm just not that knowledgeable about it. But I've seen a couple of things lately that kind of tip the cat, so to speak, toward uh the reality that we may be in the end times. Um, I've had some people want to come on the show and talk about that. I've had, um, and and they are coming on. It's just down the, you know, down the road. Mm-hmm. I've listened to some current podcasts that had guests on that talked about different signs and wonders that we're going through right now. So, yeah, I, I, uh, I think for me, instead of focusing on, doomsday scenarios lately i'm i'm trying to just fix my eyes on salvation Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know what i mean Uh, i'm trying trying to focus on what is good and what is lovely but uh it's just it's tough man because i I see some things like in particular instead of beating around the bush here i'll just i'll just say um i don't know if you've heard about these red heifers how they're re- how they're in relation to the third temple period mm-hmm. and all um that's been everywhere I turn lately I mean it's been on a couple of shows but I had elders in my church talking about these things six months ago um I get text messages from old friends you know that want to bring up this topic um I don't know if you're very familiar with it or not the red heifer situation. Yeah, I, I've been following it, um, but I'm, again, I'm not. I, I I dip in every now and then. I know it's been in the works for a few months now, at least, hasn't it? That they're trying, that yeah. breeding these things in preparation for the for obviously the yeah. But go go ahead. I'll let you. I'll let you fill fill me in on what you've learned. Go ahead. Yeah, just that. Uh, you know, people have been talking about the end time coming for mm-hmm. you know, since Jesus left, right? Yet, according to uh, these rabbis this has to happen first Mm -hmm. and 2000 years they've looked for these red heifers so they can sacrifice that's the whole point uh before they could build the third temple they had to have a sacrifice of this certain red heifer it has to be without blemish perfectly red and then they use the ashes to bless the tools and equipment that go into building this third temple so for the last 2000 years they've been looking for the the coming of the messiah right 
but they haven't had this red heifer. And for generations, these rabbis have been going out all over the world, I guess, trying to find them. Well, they found like five or nine or something like that a year ago in Texas. Mm -hmm. Um, At this point, three are still without blemish. Um, So they'll be of age and eligible for ceremonial sacrifice after Passover this year. So they're saying this is a sign of the end time because, you know, it's going to be in the third temple period. Um, so it's kind of interesting because if you bump that against Christianity, Jesus was the, uh, the final sacrifice, right? We, we're not looking for any other sacrifices to be made. And so it's just like that, that comparison of the two, like, are these things lining up regardless of our, our faith? not needing that final sacrifice is he still not going to return until after this is fulfilled in their timeline. You see what I'm saying? I do. It's just that much more of a, uh, a heads up uh, that we might be coming into hard times. So Mm -hmm. be, be prepared for this kind of thing. You know, that, that side of the conspiracy world. Um, I, I've had some people on the show recently that wanted to talk about things like the World Economic Forum. Mm-hmm. And that was very interesting, too, uh, with Klaus Schwab and all that, and how they're looking for this one world government and one world currency, one world religion. And it all ties in to the same prophetic things. You know, um, it's like no matter which conspiracy you want to go down, you know, which major topic, they all kind of funnel into a apocalyptic um, theological spiritual happening mm-hmm. you know and uh, so it's kind of like everything guides you down the path to um, where, where where you stand spiritually mm-hmm. you know um, I know that my show my listeners are kind of split you know I have some that are uh, very devout followers of christ christian listeners and then i have some that are not at all you know they're some are in the more of a new age movement or in a uh you know norse pagan mindset um some atheists some agnostic but any of them can see and do see from their own perspectives even in their own perceptions that we're going down this road and things aren't looking aren't looking right. You know what I mean? Y'all feel it. Uh, There's a shift in something somewhere. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think we're all, I mean, like I said, I've been in the game for 10 years, just watching the one event after another. And it does feel like it's ramping up to, to something, something huge is about to come just around the corner, but it's kind of always felt like something was just around the corner for these 10 years. And I do feel like we've always been in that constant state of, we need to be prepared for something. We don't. We don't really know what it's going to look like either. We don't n- quite understand what it is they're planning one hundred percent because there's many scenarios in which something could go down. Whether it's a power outage, um, a, a virus of some kind, you know, we're just in testing for that. You know, whether it's some kind of technological AI robotic takeover or an alien invasion, even is on on the cards. You know, or a false uh, holographic alien invasion involving the uh, Project Blue Bean in in you know, in cahoots with all the other technologies they have in place, such as the chemtrails, you know, and it, it kind of, we know they have so many things they could do that we just don't know what to expect next. And everyone's kind of on the back foot, just waiting for the next move to get as close as this thing we call the New World Order, you know. I mean, I don't know if you're, you're aware, maybe this might, it, it doesn't sound like you've heard this theory yet. So I'm maybe introducing a new concept to you here, but this is this is growing rapidly right now in the truth of culture. This is the next big thing, which everyone's mm-hmm. talking about. Okay, um, and it may or may not sway your fears a little bit here, but at the same time, I'm not saying this to stop us from not worrying anymore about what's to come next. Okay, because there's a, a bit of a perspective shift. This idea will will bring you, but a lot of evidence seems to be racking up coming out of the Tartarian people in the hidden history people that perhaps we've been lied to about where we are exactly on the timeline in our history and it seems like 
we may actually be Jesus Christ may already have returned over a thousand years ago and we're now living in the aftermath of his millennial reign it's already those thousand years have already come and gone and now we're in what's called the short season in revelations 20 where satan's released again and gets to rule for a little season before the final great white throne judgment at the end of time oh, so wow. yeah so this would now I'll leave you to do your own research into this topic. I've been covering it for a while on my channel. This isn't one of those things where I'm 100% set in stone, but as a researcher, I kind of have to swim in these ideas and just see what they're, really all, what, what they're all about and what's going on. The one fascinating thing I would take from that subject is that if that's the case, then these things we're seeing, which we're taking as signs of his second coming, are being orchestrated on purpose by the people in control to make us believe that Jesus is about to return for his millennial kingdom and tribulation is about to begin. However, if it's true, it's already happened. And what we're about to experience is a, a cheap, man-made imitation tribulation with the mark of the beast, you know, an antichrist figure, something, all the wars and all the earthquakes, it's all going to be manufactured. It's not the original tribulation that's already happened a long time ago, you know. Wow. So, have you thought about that concept? <laughs> have you heard that yet? Because this, I is... have, I have not heard that um, ever. That that's that's news. It's weird. Um, just two or three days ago, I I asked my wife, you know, what would we do if the rapture already happened a long time ago, and mm -hmm. we. You know, we're just the descendants of those that were left. Uh, so it, it's, it's kind of kind of in there. It's but similar. No. It's similar, yeah. Um, but what, one thing I'll say is there's many speculation about who we are in this time period if this is the case. And there would oh. have been a period of time where Christ reigned on earth for a thousand years. We call it the Dark Ages, that thousand years of history we don't really know anything about, you know. But really, it was the Light Ages. It was the age of the Son of Man. It was his millennial reign. And it's been hidden. It's been covered up and obfuscated in our history since then. Um, so, that's, like I said, if there was a rapture, it's already happened. And he's already come and he's already reigned with the saints, resurrected saints. And they've now gone somewhere on Earth. They're not gone. They're still here. So, my argument is, well... well the gospel doesn't change wherever we are in the time right. the holy spirit's still here and the gospel hasn't changed and we can still be saved but it seems like jesus would have set up an infrastructure on earth which we still live in today all the buildings the cathedrals the roads the systems the governments the countries that was all him who created that he divided the lands when he came he made it what it is today so we live in a world now where we can live comfortably and also know jesus and have the bible and the gospel and the books you know because of what he did and satan kind of just has just been released from the pits after the thousand years and he's now ruling with his watchers and everything else the rebellion's still in full swing so wherever we are in the timeline we still have to deal with satan's tricks just as they had to deal with it prior before tribulation so it doesn't change much but it does change our perspective on what's coming next, you know? And I think we have to wear these type of ideas because we don't want to be so caught off guard with something so completely unbiblical happening that we lose our faith. Because it's not true. What if, what if tribulation doesn't happen? And But all the signs were there, but it doesn't happen. How many people right. will lose their faith then and think, well, the Bible was a lie? But if they realize, no, it already happened thousands of years ago, and what the time we're living in right now is the little season of Satan where he's gathering an army, Gog and Magog, mm. to go and surround the camp of saints and make war with Jesus. Because he never left, according to this theory. He's on earth somewhere with his saints in the beloved city. And Satan's going to raise an army to go fight it, to make war with it. So it, when I heard this theory, I was like, well, this makes sense of a lot of things. It makes sense of the times we're in, actually. And what the real end goal agenda is. Because they're always talking about establishing a new world order, right? right? Well, if this is the case, we're actually already in the new world order. The new world order was established when Satan was released about 300, 400 years ago. Let's say 1776, shall we? When Independence Day kicked off, you know? <laughs> and so it's kind of... 
I don't know. I've, I've said a lot because there's a lot to say on this, but um, I, I, I'm going to let you just think about this concept. And I want to get your opinion on it as somebody who's been researching for a long time. You know, what do you think of this concept? This is actually wild. Um, it, I, I've, I've never heard anything like this. I've never experienced uh, somebody even bringing this up. That's a lot to wrap your head around, man. It is. Uh, it is. Um, okay, so Jesus would still be on the earth. Yes, his kingdom never ends. He just co- never. he he comes and establishes his kingdom on earth, but the right. king that the kingdom itself doesn't get destroyed. He simply right. hands over to Satan for a little season, as it says in Revelations twenty, at the end of the thousand years. And then it says, at the end of the thousand years, the rest of the dead are resurrected. So there's the first resurrection, which is the saints, the martyrs. And then there's the second resurrection, which comes after the millennial reign. You could theorize that we are those people. The second resurrection, maybe. People who didn't get to know Christ, who lived before Christ came, have had now have a second chance in this time, maybe. I, I, we don't know. It's all speculation now. Uh, or maybe that second resurrection comes at the end of the little season and it's for the final great white throne judgment. Because again, this is the funny thing. It doesn't matter whether we're waiting for great white throne judgment or we're waiting for tribulation. We're still waiting for that end time event. So it really doesn't change much. Right. All it, but what it does change is uh, what we're about to experience will be a true counterfeit tribulation. It's not the real deal. That's all right. it changes. And that's I do feel like... Because I said they're testing all these ways they can do the big event right. It's like the right. it's like they've come up with hundreds of marks of the beast to see which yeah. ones to see which one sticks. It's like they're yeah. trying to recreate something that's already happened and make their own version. It's like, oh well, the Christians will believe this is a convincing mark of the beast. So let's use this one. It's like they're going off the scripts, trying to recreate tribulation as the script said it would happen, but with right. what, they, what they've got to hand today. It's like the biggest deception, you know, when it's talking about, you know, even the very, even the very elect could be deceived. This feels like one of those deceptions, you know, and uh, again, I know it's a lot to take in. I really do, because I've been there with you. I was there with you. Trust me. I I was there waiting, looking at the signs, looking at the Revelation 13, the sun at the the feet of the woman in the sky, all these things, you know, (laughs) I've been there, you know, and but when when I heard this. It's just got that feeling. It's something clicked, and I'm not saying God's told me this. I'm not going down that I'm the prophetic route or anything. I'm just saying it's a very fascinating concept that I don't think, as conspiracy theorists, we can just ignore. So, right. Okay, so go go ahead. I'll, I'll you. I'll pass the ball back to you and see what you think again. Yeah, yeah, because that would have legs. You know, it fits in that pocket, that pocket of Tom yeah. that I wish would have. You know elaborated on a little bit if he if he had if he was given you know what is in that short season Mm. Uh, but that fits into so many weird things like uh if you say like you talk about if if we're given a second chance you know if this is the generation that gets that second opportunity um well wouldn't that explain people having uncanny gifts at young ages of being able it's almost like a uh reincarnation type thing like you know, there's there's parts of our lives, past lives that we would be able to be just more adept in certain things. But there was something else that you said that, uh, you know, the testing, the testing of the mark of the beast is, you know, throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. How many times have we thought that it has been the mark? You know, mm-hmm. uh, this is on YouTube. I got to I got to be careful of what I say. Right. Yeah. Uh, we we'll use code words. I'm sure my audience, trust my audience. They'll know what you're talking about, but use, let's use code words. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the pokey, <laughs> you know, that'll do. A lot, a lot of people thought that was, uh, some sort of the mark, you know, even with, uh, elements within it that were supposed to have been named after, uh, Lucifer and stuff like that. Like there were components inside of this chemical that, they thought that, you know, maybe that's a sign that this is the mark. Um, going back to the Holocaust, man, um, having to wear, mm. you know, at your papers, it's like, it's it was like, this is a trial run to see what the mark of the beast is going to look like. Um, now with um, these chips, you know, these, these nano 
particles and these microchips you can put in your hand or whatever to wave your hand across and pay for things. And uh, people think that that's a precursor for the mark. Neuralink. Mm-hmm. There's a huge push. People are saying that, that maybe that's the mark. Um, mm-hmm. That makes sense. It, that explains that away. And it also explains how you brought up earlier too, Project Bluebeam. Um, this big, the great deception that um, there, there's several theories about Project Bluebeam, but one being that it is a false rapture. Um, or And there's another thing that people think that it will be used as an explanation for the actual rapture, if we're not in this short season, that when people are taken up to be with the Lord, that they're going to say, oh, that was the aliens that, that, <laughs> that took these people or whatever. And that's an excuse for Project Bluebeam. Um, but what what? It's just it's just more deception, I think, more signs and wonders uh, with with Bluebeam. And mm-hmm. it would be it would fit in there. Um, but man, this is, that's a, that's a very heavy thing to drop on me, man. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm just, I know, I know, but, what, but I guess consider this a, a friendly warning. I'm not asking you to have any opinion on it right now. This is a prepare for this to take over soon. This is, this is a growing topic. Okay. This, this train of thought is, it's the next Mandela effect topic. It's the next flat earth topic. You know, it's that big. It's one of those, it's going to just take over the conspiracy world soon tartaria was a big thing for a few years you know um the 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 manipulated timelines the mud flood phenomena these buildings that can't be explained by people with horse and cart stuff you know i'm sure you've heard all of that over the past three years well this has been explained as no what you call the tartarian empire that was jesus's millennial reign that's what that's what it really was that's where all these buildings come from that was his kingdom established and the the infant the knowledge he brought um the extended life people ended up having during it with his presence you know the ability the skills they learnt, the the perfected humans the saints had abilities well beyond any normal human and they just could just do these things you know and they could see frequencies and sounds and dimensions in ways we couldn't comprehend and that knowledge was passed to the people who weren't perfected who lived during that time who just lived a lot longer like a few hundred years rather than 80 if we're lucky years here you know what i mean it was a and that's why we have all these beautiful cathedrals everywhere. That's why we have this infrastructure in place. And that's why there was such a huge effort at the beginning of the 20th century to just decimate a lot of Europe and a lot of these buildings. That's why there was hundreds and thousands of stories of cities being burnt down by great fires in the 1800s. It's because they were hiding the past. Satan had been released and it was his turn to hide the past as much as possible. And I was never satisfied with the Tartarian stuff. I knew there was something in it. But, yeah, I, more- but their answers were too Gnostic and too new agey and too woo and too out there. Then they didn't fit the biblical narrative until you did this sudden, oh, wait a minute. It says at the end of revelations that there would be a little season, you know, and suddenly it all makes sense. But yeah. it, again, it, it's a scary topic. The reaction to this has been very mixed from a lot of people. Um, some people are just not willing to, to even consider it because they've, they've been swimming in, rapture is about to happen tribulation is about to happen you know the swimming in that and the argument is this is the great deception what you're talking about is is the great deception you're going to lead people away and they're not going to know what's coming and i'm like if this is the great deception it's not very good because about 0.001 percent of christians know about it (laughs) you know it's not a very good deception could it be possible the great deception is that you you have all believed what the churches have told you which is a lie which is controlled by Satan right now in his little season. It's not like they've lied about the gospel. They've just just lied about that one thing where you are in the time. And that was enough. That one degree of deviation is enough to make you lost over hundreds of years, you know, and it's kind of, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a big one. It's a, it's a really big one. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Just. All right. (laughs) All right. Okay. 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 So the the kingdom of Christ, would that be in Antarctica where we're not allowed to go? 
this big the one thing that everybody agrees on this big treaty that nobody goes over there you you, know, you can go hang out in this area in this area but where the where this lush beautiful land is that admiral bird talks about um did he get a glimpse of christ's kingdom was that would that be part of that too? this is where the theories are starting to click into place yeah like people have gone along the lines you're talking about exactly a lot of what admiral bird said is maybe making sense now based on this and the crystal kingdom and all these type of things you know what i mean and but there's uh there's speculation whether he's in the south pole or maybe in the center of the earth in the north pole um mm. and we're told the North Pole is just like an ever-changing ice sheet of some kind, you know, that's melting even. Um, right. But the truth is, perhaps it's actually, once you get past the ice, it gets warmer again, and you're actually in this luscious, perfect Mount Zion in the centre of Earth with the new, Rupert Snegra, the black rock, magnetic rock in the middle, which we call, you know, the magnetic North Pole or the, uh, the, the uh, geographic North Pole. But uh, the funny thing is, if you track the North Pole, and people have been tracking it since, like, maybe the 30s, um, it's been moving from um, Canada across to Siberia. It's been moving for, you know, quite quickly over the past 100 years to the other side of that of that expanse. And is it possible that mo the moving pole, the magnetic north that moves, so not the geographic north, which is the official stamp of the centre, is it possible that moving magnetic north is the floating city, the camp of saints? And is it possible they're going to try and play once it reaches Siberia and becomes visible again? Alien invasion, giant mothership has come to invade, and they're going to convince the whole earth that we're under attack from aliens when really it's Christ's kingdom, his floating wow. city, becoming visible. You know, we don't. This is the I mean. There's loads that we can you can speculate wildly here, but I'm trying to fit it into the agendas that have been at play for years like the alien invasion in gender. And I'm thinking, well, how would that work then if if it's this Camp of Saints situation, you know? And uh, this is this will blow your mind, is the uh, the Santa Claus analogy. Who's Who lives in the North Pole, as, as we're told as children? It's an all-seeing, right. omnipotent, godlike creature who knows if you're naughty or nice, you know, and he's making a list and checking it twice and judges you based on your works. Well, that's a that's a satanic inversion of Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, who has saved you through faith and grace. You know what I mean? It's the opposite. It's and also your rewards aren't presents like Santa. Right. It's everlasting life, things not of this world. Right. You know what I mean? So it's like it's perfect satanic inversion of right. Jesus Christ. That's what Santa Claus actually is, who lives in the North Pole. You know, with his elves, which would be. Jesus is mm -hmm. Jesus is saints. So you can start to see it, things start to click. The more oh. you start to like scratch, you know, little things like that, you know, and um, yeah, it's it's trippy, you know. So the North Pole is the predominant theory, but people have speculated it's the South Pole as well. Again, where no one's allowed to go, you know. Right. Um, but I don't know. I'll, I'll let that sink in, and I get your opinion on that one as well. <laughs> but, uh... You're killing me, man. <laughs> this is beautiful this is wonderful I, I love to have to think you know i love it when i'm i'm made to think hard um there goes santa claus you know <laughs> like... <laughs> yeah 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 that was uh yeah i did I, yeah i don't know when i first heard that one i laughed too I, I... <laughs> Because we always knew, didn't we? Santa is an anagram for Satan. There's something dodgy about it. It's based on pagan Norse mythologies and and um, Siberian monks of some kind who would pick mushrooms and dry them on the trees. And that's why we decorate trees with baubles. And then they would take those mushrooms in their sack, go down the seat, the the roofs of the yurts that were all snowed in give the mushrooms to the tribesmen because he was the shaman and they would hang the mushrooms on their stockings and dry them out. Uh, so in the morning they could eat the mushrooms and trip. I've heard these Santa is a shaman. I've also heard that is an analogy for, for Odin, you know, and all these other things. And it's kind of a, then it got westernized capitalists. Coca-Cola took over and turned it into this symbol we have today and all these other things. It's based on like uh, European mythology and folklore with Krampus involved. So we knew it was always dodgy. Like Santa Claus was dodgy, but when you when you realize, oh, by the way, he lives in the North Pole. He's like a god that can see everything, and he has his elves. Then suddenly you get this millennial kingdom, alternate yeah. where Jesus is in the North Pole with his saints. 
something else. It's kind of, it's, it's just stupid, isn't it? It's kind of, all this time we were looking over here, pointing out that why it's corrupt, when really perhaps this is why it was really corrupt. You know, it's this Jesus thing. Um, I am just going to have to restart this call because I haven't paid for Zoom and I don't normally use Zoom and it's about to time out. So okay. I'm going to hang up start a new one send you the link and you can jump straight in and we'll have a new fresh 30 minutes to go okay bro so thanks for holding on and just bear with me guys okay um right so let me Sorry. Just, let me just hang this up okay here we go yeah sorry about this guys like i, said, I don't normally use uh zoom it's just not something um i would do ordinarily but because Skype has just complete and totally just just broken down and become completely useless, this is what I'm doing now. But if you, if you don't pay for Zoom, you only get 30 minutes at a time in a meeting. Um, so all I have to do is start this. Uh, da, 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 and let me remember where it is. Invite, that's it. And I'll do that through Gmail. And I'll send that to the Bump podcast. And all that you'll have to do is click that link and he should join us again in a minute. Perfect. There we go. While we're waiting, guys, I've got a, a bit of a, an advertisement here for you. This is a you may have noticed in the background, even right now as I'm talking, um, this piece of artwork in the background. People have been curious about it. Uh, this was actually a gift that was sent to me by one of my listeners called Elizabeth Joyce. Um, she has taken the leap of faith these little notes she left for me and my wife saying thank you for helping her uh, regain her faith basically <laughs> through a lot of the work that i do on this channel and you know it's very humbling and she sent me this amazing print of one of her drawings um and i you know i have an art degree and i want to help any artist any way i possibly can i'm trying to pay it forward here you know because obviously she, she showed me some a lot of support and gratitude on the channel and i, want, I do want to pay it forward and it's hard to make it as an artist this day and age. And she's explained to me how she does want to really make a go of actually making a living, being an artist, doing what she actually loves. Um, you know, I took my own leap of faith um, a year ago by quitting my nine to five corporate job to do this full time and also to be a photographer full time and to really use my my creative arts degree to the best I can. And, you know, I've I've landed on my feet, luckily, just about but it was a struggle. It's a struggle. It's difficult. And she's obviously taking that leap to do the same thing herself. Uh, so what I'd like you to do, guys, is show some support to Elizabeth, if possible, and go and check out her website. Here it is. And this is the, the, the print you see in the background. As you can see, it's birds on a beautiful cathedral uh, styled win um, windowless window, shall we say. Um, and it's it's incredible work. It's talented work. It's detailed and the art industry today is just so corrupt and awful. Um, we need to support people that actually have real talent still because uh, literal garbage in a pile in the corner is being presented as art this day and age. It's some sort of weird money laundering scheme, no doubt. <laughs> but, but we have to support real artists the best we can. And she's open to commissions, as we can see here. She'll um, even paint um she'll draw on your special day even she does weddings Um, she's also doing uh, tu uh tutoring teaching if you want to learn how to draw she's doing online lessons i believe um and you can see she she's got some talent you know and she has prints for sale which i believe are criminally underpriced from what i saw um but while they while they are cheap, why not get in there and get yourself a print, eh? So there we go, guys. Go check out Elizabeth Joyce Artworks, ejoyceartworks.com. You can see it up here. Um, I'll put the link in the description. But go and check out her prints and give us some support. Uh, but I believe, Bo, I can hear you there. I think I think you're back. Let me just uh, open that up. There we go. We're back, and we've got another half an hour fresh. So did you have time to think in that time you were... <laughs> <laughs> what have you got for me what have you got for me throw it at me i was i was taken in by the e joyce artworks behind you there that, that is beautiful work that's beautiful work it is um, it, it really is yeah and like i said i just did a quick advert there and um i'm gonna i'm gonna make an advert to add at the end of my videos like a quick minute just to try and promote her but they say people have wondered like why do you have a rose in the background are you a rosicrucian or something like that <laughs> it's kind of like no it was a sincere print sent to me by a fan 
who's a talented artist who wrote this amazing note thanking me um and again i'm just paying it forward guys that's all it is nothing nothing sinister um i'll sort that out later but there we go <laughs> but yeah but um as it soaked in a little bit of what i said to you um did you because like i said i, I want to talk to podcasters about all sorts of topics because people like yourself you talk to hundreds of people coming from different backgrounds who all have different detailed accounts to give you covering many topics including things like bigfoot you know and uh, cryptids uh, end times eschatology and or just everything you can imagine you know so you'll have more insight than me probably when these big ideas turn up i'm sure there's thousands of things probably blasting off in your brain <laughs> connections going so i want to just uh while i've got you here i want to see what what you've got for me based on what i've told you yeah i mean you you have to leave this stuff on the table if there's room for it and there's room for it like like you said this this short season this pocket of time uh, that's all that is said about it it doesn't really elaborate more than that no um so wh why not entertain that why not at least flesh this out um if it makes other things make sense you know let's uh let's entertain it um you know i have theories you know, working theories about a couple of things um, that line up somewhat in, in a biblical perspective um, about different characters, I guess you'd call them, in the Bible um, and how it lines up with the cryptid community and Bigfoot phenomenon and stuff like that. And if I'm sitting here trying to make that work, then why wouldn't I try to understand why this works? Um, yeah, you, you opened my eyes to this, the, the clowns and the Nephilim connection. And now you are opening my eyes with this counterfeit God and Santa Claus connection. <laughs> in the North Pole. Uh, yeah, but this, the Tartarian thing, you know, I've kind of stayed on the, just on the fringe of the, that whole topic. I've never really dealt, you know, delved too deep into it. Uh, I know the the mud flood, you know, these big, elaborate, beautiful structures that seem to be like you you see windows at ground level, um, and there's there's all this this questions as to why you know it wasn't built beneath the earth. This was mm. buried way. Um, Where'd the mud come from? That kind of thing. Is this, does that even tie into a great flood? Um, I've, I've not, I've not had anybody on even that wanted to go into tar, you know, Tartarian conspiracy. Um, if, if you are well versed in that, that would be a great topic to have you on the show to discuss. Uh, this whole theory would be awesome. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I've been on a podcast, um, I've been on two podcasts now talking about this idea. And again, I don't have all the answers for this one. I have just, I'm just riding the, the information wave along with everybody else. I just happen to be talking about it. I'm learning along with everyone. This is fresh, you know, this is like, it was first discussed, I believe, I think there was, um, there's always been the mud flood people. And they're having Christian mud flooders trying to explain that maybe it was Armageddon. There was a channel called Mud Flood was Armageddon, and I think he did talk about it um, years ago. Um, relatively small channel, but I do think, you know, credit where credit's due, he did discuss it quite a few years ago. But then there's, there were other channels who are a bit bigger who also discuss this in detail, you know, and this is about three or four years ago now. So I think Conspiracy R Us covered this. Um, in a couple of vid just two videos, and then he also covers a lot of hidden history stuff on his channel, which corroborates with a lot of these these ideas and concepts. So he's in a lot of foundational, fantastic work as well. Um, and then there was a channel called Exploring Tartaria, and she blew this wide open and really, really lent into: Is this really the remnants of the Millennial Kingdom we're seeing here? And she she leaned into explaining things like so. Is the Catholic Church we have today 
like a corrupted remnant of what Christ's church originally was when he reigned for a thousand years, which is why there were just saints plastered all over these cathedrals. And this is where the idea of praying to saints as intermediaries actually comes from. It's because they were actually walking around in the flesh once in these cathedrals. Well, and all these cathedrals are named after them. Maybe it was a part of their reigning with Christ situation. They had their own pockets of humanity they looked over and were a part of on behalf of Christ who was ruling from his kingdom. You know, they were his his lesser kings in a way, you know, his 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 saints, <laughs> you know, his entourage. <laughs> and they hold and again that was their reward for staying faithful to the end through tribulation, that they get to reign with Christ, literally reign with Christ, you know. So she, she again she goes she but she's just speculating, but she shows a lot of image and she's then goes through the timeline and she's mapped out her own in a very simple image, her version of what it probably would have looked like, you know. Try to explain and she, she she doesn't have all the answers, but she really she about three years ago she made this ex exploring Tartaria is the channel's name. And she stopped making videos. She made like five videos and then stopped. But those five videos are fantastic, you know, that she and I, I, I don't know where she is now or what's going on, but I, I would love to talk to her because she really got the ball rolling for a lot of people from this. An alternative answer for the Tartarian stuff. Has anybody checked on her? I guess she's still with us. She's still around. I think she does post on Instagram. But she stopped right. making these videos. And to be honest, with the amount of backlash I have received, even just humoring the idea from really devout, extreme, dogmatic Christian types who were, like I said, entrenched in tribulation, rapture theology and dispensationalist theology, you know, and, and, and Zionist theology, they just they think this is blasphemy. Just to even right. utter the words, you know, and I imagine in the early days, she probably got a lot of it. So it was probably yeah. discouraged from carrying on, but the videos are still there. So there are other yeah. people who have talked about this, who have been doing it a lot. I'm new. I only started talking about my channel maybe two months ago. Okay. And I've right. garnered a big following because of it. There's another great channel called, um, uh, there's no place like home. Cause she's a homeschooling channel originally, but she's called Shelly. And, uh, she has this, a podcast called question narrative. Um, and she's been covering this a lot as well and has garnered a big following discussing these concepts too. And she's like me. We're just speculating here. We're just humoring it. We're questioning the narrative and the established dogma to see if there's any weight to it. And I've had her on the channel. There's, there's like, there are other channels. So what I could do is come on your podcast and just give an overview of everything I know so far. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, that's the best I can do for you. But it's, this right. is, I don't want credit. This is not, you know, I'm, I'm just, like I said, I'm just, trying to figure it out like everybody else this is this is nuts this is nuts this one well have they have they masked it out like how long this short season is and how long we've been in it? You, you said for instance 1776 um is that is that what they think that the time is look look this this is up for debate big time okay some people say it's, it's literally um when rome collapsed in 500s to the end of the Dark Ages in the 1500s, that thousand year period we call the Dark Ages. That's with no affected timeline issues. The history we have is true. We've just been lied to about that one time zone. We call it a time where nothing much happened. We call it the Dark Ages. But the truth yeah. is that was the reign of Christ, you know. Um, but then there are other people who say it's been warped, like... They say it was 500 AD in the history, historical records when Rome collapsed, but it was actually 70 AD and that 400 years has been added. It was never actually there, for example. It's convoluted history. It's made up history. Um, a lot of history, hist history revisionist thought has come into it. So that means a lot of stuff that we think has happened either didn't happen or it happened a lot earlier than when we've actually been documenting it. It was more condensed than what we've been told. It didn't happen over 500 years, for example, up to the collapse of Rome. It happened in like 50 years. Things like that, you know, so they've messed with it. So, And then there's also other people argue um, they've added a thousand years to our time that doesn't exist. So 70 AD, um, the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. And that's mm -hmm. when millennial, the millennial kingdom began. So then to 1070 is when the little season is when the little season began and that little season has only been happening for about 250 years so far cuz and 
we're not really living in, for instance, when, let's say, 1774, that was actually 1,070. They've just added like 700 years, 666 years, let's say, to the timeline. That doesn't really exist. I've heard that as well, you know. And to do that, what they've done, basically, they've taken history and they've taken one event and split it into two and changed the names Mm. and said one. So something may have happened at this part of the of the earth in like 400 something or other. And a king had a war with these specific people and this specific thing happened. But then the exact same pattern of events happened with people 1,000 years later in a different part of the world. But it's, it's identical what happened. But the names and the locations have changed. So people have been like tearing history up basically and copy pasting events to try and make a manufactured timeline to make it seem like 2,000 years has passed and Christ still hasn't returned. Do you get what I mean? But a lot of it's all been made up by, they say, Jesuits. And um, right. and uh, um, it's, Sc- Sc- it's Scaligarian, I think it's called. He's the, he's the Jesuit priest in about the 1600s who wrote our chronology as we know it. We, and we still follow the Scaligarian timeline today. That's the one we follow today. That's the, That's who wrote our history. And that lines up with 1600s, End of, the, end of the millennial reign, coming out of the dark ages, as they say it, Satan takes over, rewrites history, a few generations mm. down the line, everyone's forgot. And then this is where mental asylums come into it. It seems like a lot of people who lived through the millennial reign may have been locked up in mental, mental institutions um, in like the 1800s, and their children oh. were the orphans that were everywhere. The mass orphan boom of the 1800s on the orphan trains and all these type of things, mass relocation of people, just basically to remove memory of the past, and then retrain the new generations to forget through the education systems they control. So this like mass mass shakeup in the 1800s to our historical timeline, but it's possible it wasn't the 1800s. It was actually 1,200 and something. Do you know what I mean? It's a, yeah. It's it's massively up for debate how that worked. But there's evidence everywhere that seems to point towards he was here. He's left his fingerprint behind. It's it's been done. And there's things like coins is a good example. Gold and silver coins. He reestablished the gold standard when he came, you know. And the coins that were made have things like J six hundred and eighty three on them. And then they try and tell us that means six hundred, sixteen hundreds and eighty three. But it doesn't say 1683, it says J683. So that J represents Jesus in the year of our Lord, 653. This was the money that was going around while he reigned. And you see on stone, on these buildings, the people have like added an M in front of like DDCXIII. If you add an M, you've added a thousand years to it. There's photos right. showing that M not existing, and then in the modern age, it suddenly does exist. So they've like defaced things to to mess with our perception of when we actually are, you know. And these these coins have I's or J's on them, which would be Jesus, the Greek Latin, in, um, the Latinized version of Jesus, and then the J could be said to be Jesus, you know. And an I looks similar to a one. So mm-hmm. it's it's I nine fifty three, not nineteen fifty three, for example. But they've yeah, it's it's really weird. Like there's a lot of remnants uh, laying around, clues that we can find that show it seems like he made his mark, and the, they're doing their best to still cover it up today. They're still destroying old architecture and old world buildings that we just cannot copy or build anymore. It's kind of they're just squashing it to build and establish the new world order which i believe they already do establish i mean one more interesting concept is um freemasonry the freemasons built america right or Mm. did they just steal all the freemasonry that was laying around after jesus left and claimed ownership (laughs) of it you know (laughs) it's free real estate right you know they basically just established these places founded these places right they they didn't build them you know and it's kind of a so that yeah. I've unloaded more to you. What else have you got? <laughs> Does that make any sense? <laughs> Man, you know, no, you know, I've I've been entertaining in my mind. I, I haven't talked about it on the show. Um, 
the timeline being off, you know, because um, it just don't make sense to me. But I was thinking like billions and billions of years don't make sense to me. Not this removal or addition of a thousand year period just so recently. Mm -hmm. That's like, you know, it while you're talking, I'm trying to think, you know, trying to put everything up against scripture. And, you know, between the Old Testament and the New, there was like a 400 year gap. Right. Um, so there's like that missing Tom. With, and that's where we get the Dead Sea Scrolls. It helps try to fill in some of that, I believe. Mm -hmm. But we see like there, there's just no history. I, there's there's no real biblical history in that gap. So I can't say that there wouldn't be a gap, you know, after Christ mm -hmm. uh, that we're not being shown. You know, things have been hidden from us before, you know, even in uh, more modern versions of our Bible, there's certain verses that are just removed. Just take that out, toss it out. And I have the older copy and the newer copy of these of these Bibles, same translations where there's scripture removed. So why is that? What's what is being hidden from us and why? Um, so. For me, I try to stay open minded to this stuff, man. I this there's plenty of room for this for me, um, for it to fit in. It's it would be a little disheartening, I guess. Um, I, I would if I subscribe to this wholeheartedly, I'm probably going to quit my job and go look for the kingdom of Christ. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's funny you should say that because there's a channel called, um, he runs it with his wife. It's Theron and Bethany, and they have a channel called Home um, Toad House, so Homestead Seven Toad House. And I add them on my channel, and they are trying to get to the North Pole. They're trying to figure out a way to get there. They're gonna get a boat, make the way, sail north, and see what happens. You know, see what they find. Mm -hmm. um, but at the same time, I'm not sure if if we are even allowed to entry. There might be an angel with a flaming sword waiting for you if you even try, you know. I think it could be now a sense of only the perfected are allowed in there. It's not... Because it's like the holy city, you know. it's it, You have to be perfect to enter it. And the saints are in there, or perhaps surrounding it even. Even they might not be in the city itself. And that might be a, an example of things to come. You know, right. um, it's like a, a worldly physical representation of the heavenly kingdom, which will be established in the end, the final judgment, you know, and a new heaven and a new earth will come at the end of the little season, at the final judgment, you know, right. and it, and it's, so I don't know if you could even could make it there, you know, I don't even, I don't even know if we're allowed access, I have no idea what would actually happen, you know, if, if you even tried, or if you, if you got close, you'd burn up, you know, what I, mean? I don't actually know in our physical state what it is i think i think this is why we have to keep our eyes on spiritual things rather than physical things and not go chasing after cities necessarily but there are people out there who are sincerely going to have a good look they're going to try their best you know and see what happens um well, who knows how long know? is season? how have, have they said has anybody tried to math it out how long the short season is oh there's yeah it, it how long's a piece of string at the end of the day? Because we're told a thousand years for his reign, but we're not told how long a little season is. And I think there's a reason for that. It's date setters. We shouldn't be setting dates. No man knows the day or the hour still stands. Okay. Even after, you shouldn't be setting dates because then you wouldn't live your life effectively if you knew when the end was coming. Right. That's the issue. It messes with... for humans to know the date would mess us up. Oh yeah, man. that's the problem. Yeah. So I've, I'm not looking to set dates. I don't want to fall in the trap of making this like a tribulation thing again, where everybody knows the date's about to happen, and then you know that day comes and goes, and nothing happens. We've seen that for years online, people setting the dates, you know. Um, and I don't think we should be doing that with this this angle, this this version. Um, yeah. But people, I, 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 this is my first time hearing it. I, I'm asking like. Has anybody speculated? Yeah, that? yeah, yeah. So let's say the Statue of Liberty, for example, is Lucifer with the the the, the fire, you know, and the, the the ray of light, Apollo, Apollyon, Apollo, you know, it's the sun god representation. It's a Lucifer who came out of the pit, you know. Um, it has a chain that's broken on the ankle, so it's been released. Okay, that's okay, and that has on the seventeen. It's independent. It's to represent independence. 
you know, freedom from the millennial reign. Oh, so it, my God. So yeah. that date established is on the, 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 the thing the Statue of Liberty is holding. It's, I think it says 1776, okay? So let's, just, let's assume that's when it happened, okay? And now we are two... How far are we? 230-something years away from that? What are we? What are we? It's about 200, 240... Eight, okay years. okay so people think a little season is literally mm -hmm. a quarter of a thousand year reign like a season is a quarter of a year oh wow okay so 200 so 250 years would mean 2026 is the end if you want to go off that measurement but i would say it's arbitrary to just say 250 years is right. a season necessarily why do we just assume a thousand years represents one full year? There's 365 days in a year, for example. Why, why not go off 3,650 yeah, 50. 50 years instead and then quarter that? That means it's like 900 years or something. I don't know. My maths is not very good right now, but you know what I mean? It's not, we, we, we shouldn't just assume 250 years based on the millennial kingdom being a thousand years. We shouldn't assume that math. Like it is arbitrary to do that, because again, um, a year isn't a thousand. It's not in tens. It's not done in tens. You know, it's, it's done in twelves and other. You know, it's not the same. So I'm not going to say it's twenty twenty six is the day it all ends. I think they have a lot they need to do first. Actually, I think it says in Revelation he needs to gather an army and surround the camp of saints, and that the number of that army will be will be as the sand of the sea billions right. billions and billions a billion like a multi-billion man army we're talking about here you know and we say there's nine billion people on the earth now how is he going to convince billions of people to make war with something well right. an alien invasion might do that it might rally all of humanity to come together as one to go and fight this evil invading scourge that's rested in the north pole you know, or something like that that's right. one speculation, but to get there, I think a lot has to happen yet. A lot has to happen. And maybe he still wants to play out the whole uh, tribulation thing. So we need seven years for that to play out, don't we? Right. You know, so right. it's kind of, I'm not going to say 250 years from 1776 is it. For all we know, he was released in the 1600s at the end of the uh, Dark Ages, and it's already been about 500 years already. And maybe our translations off because maybe what we say short season in English actually from what I've heard people speculating, it means the same amount of time, another thousand years, maybe. Okay. You know what I mean? So we don't, we don't know, which is why I don't want a date set. Right. You know what I mean? We don't, we cannot know these things and, um, but be prepared for any eventuality. When I'm, that's always been my philosophy, which is why I do this, you know, which is why I go down these rabbit holes and cause maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Jesus is about to return for the second time and tribulation is still about to happen. Or, or maybe it's all just an orchestrated mimic of the original event that happened thousands of years ago. We need to know so we're not deceived when the time actually comes and it becomes obvious where we actually are. Um, right. That's kind of my that, philosophy. But yeah, go ahead. That was something else that you had, had talked about, like how they were like cut and paste, you know, to try to make this historical timeline. Well, if we look throughout the Bible, there is a, uh, a a pattern in it too, right? So we see you know, this the story unfold. The world is saved by one man, basically, and he 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 starts everything over again. And then things go really bad, and then we pick up with this new this new man, and it, it goes on. And there's this pattern throughout. Um, so it would make sense that whoever the powers that be are, are trying to counterfeit with taking stories and just cutting and pasting a sequence of events, because that's what they, you know, er everything is a counterfeit from the gospels or, or from the, not just the gospel, but from the book, of, you know, the, the Bible, mm -hmm. I, I can see, I can see how they would use that as their, their game book, you know, to, to repeat these patterns of events, try to say this was, and try to stretch out this timeline. Mm -hmm. 
man, it, there's just so much going on right now. I, it's hard to even get a, a full thought before, you know. I, the I, next I, thing, yeah. <laughs> like a, a, a bumbling lunatic on here, man. Um, but there, there, this is just so deep. Uh, it uncovers a lot. It explains a lot. This would this would explain a lot. I, I need more. I need more information. Paul. You need, I need, you, more. need you need more time. I think to let it soak in. You need to sleep on this. Um, I get it. I get it. I, 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 I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do no. this. <laughs> I really didn't. I, I can't help myself. I just. I'm just. You know, I these love are, it. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're like, what's been on your mind lately? Uh, well, let me go ahead and just make you forget all that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's hope in this as well, because maybe th that there is something to be said then, that we don't have to live in this perpetual fear of prepping all the time. Because right. uh, maybe it is all smoke and mirrors. They're not going to be able to recreate a tribulation event. They have no right. chance. They're not God. Right. <laughs> oh, it's not going to happen. But if they can, as long as they can always make us continue to believe it's just around the corner then they've got us in a mental state of fear. And of course, you should never, if you're a Christian, you shouldn't be fearing the return of Christ right. anyway. Um, right. But that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to get you to be scared of of pain, the suffering that's coming, the horrors of tribulation, you know. And it's a bit Gnostic-y to view it that way as well. It's like the cruel, evil God's going to come and cause suffering everywhere, you know. It's that kind of attitude. But what if it's already come and gone? It's, it's, that's not the time we're in, you know. The ultimate deception now is to convince humanity to join together as one so they can make war with the camp of saints. That's all no. that's left in the script. And to do that, playing on people's religious fears is probably the best way the devil would do it, you know. Um, so we, maybe this is new hope now. Maybe it, it, this is freeing for us to know these things, you know. And, next I don't know. I, I would, one more question. Go ahead. Um, historically, um, I, I guess it would have been suppressed, but when Jesus returned, who, where did he come to? I know he didn't just, like, he, there's no way he would have just come into the North Pole. <laughs> you know, like, uh, where, where would he be at in our history? Who would he have been? Like, I know it's Jesus, but would would we have no recollection, no record of this? Uh, would it be completely expunged from world history? No, not really. It seems like it's been covered up and they've given different names to his representations all over the earth and just named them as different kings of different time periods. But it was all talking about the same king, Jesus. I've, I've heard that one and people showing examples of these paintings of, of a Jesus looking like king everywhere. But they all have their own names, you know. And um, St. George, for example, the dragon slayer is said to be, perhaps that was Jesus. Do you get what I mean? That was his artistic rendition of him that people had made at the time who came and put the, put the dragon back into the pit, you know what I mean? Came and defeated the dragon, the dragon slayer type of thing. So it's kind of like uh, different cultures would have had their own, their own way of describing what was happening but not a Middle Eastern typical biblical way of describing it like we're used to, you know what I mean? So they, right. and um, it's still up in the air. The people are still trying to piece this together and try and see and look at the historical record. Um, uh, Noel Hadley from the Un Unexpected Cosmology, controversial character because he's got his own theological views, but he has done some fantastic look into the histories of different cultures to try and piece together evidences, you know? So he's always worth checking out just to get that bit of extra curricular you know, dr yeah. dry writings, going through the writings and the papers and the histories to find what we can, you know. Um, but it seems like, you know, when he did come, it was war initially. He came with a sword, you know, and it was destruction and fire and, and, and it was quickly, it was a quick war though. Well, you know, it lasted as long as it lasted, but people very quickly realized they can't win this one. And there was rebellion. It wasn't, he came to rule with a rod of iron, it's described. He divided the nations. He subdued the nations. He probably, once he established his kingdom and came first to where he left originally to his peoples, you know, and put them in line and sorted that out. Then he, from his established base, wherever that was, people have argued it might be in America. And the land of America is actually where most of the Bible took place. 
and we've been lied even t- today about where the true Jerusalem actually was, the geographical location. It's not this place we call the Middle East today. It was actually somewhere else on the Earth, and perhaps Earth looked a lot different then as well. It wasn't mapped out how we see it today. It could possibly have been Pangaea, where all islands were connected together as one, and that's how the gospel was spread so easily, because they could just walk everywhere. They didn't have to cross seas, you know. So we don't even know where things happened exactly because we've just completely been lied to about everything like everything goes out the window now with this new perspective and we have to revise everything and reconsider it but it seems like when he did come there was war initially and then obviously his perfected resurrected saints would have been indestructible immortal warriors (laughs) and could probably destroy things without even having to raise a finger they could just manipulate reality and god god only knows how it would have looked you know but i think even once he it settled down and he established his reign and, and he still gave the kings of the earth, oh, you can keep your lands, but you have to make a pilgrimage to me. You have to acknowledge me. You have to understand what's really going on here, you know. And some kings m- refuse to make the pilgrimage. And it's described in Isaiah, I think it's Isaiah, that people who don't go suffer droughts. And we can even see today parts of the earth that are just nothing but dry desert sand. Are these remnants of those kingdoms who refused to bow, take bend the knee when he was here, and they suffered wow. the consequences for it, you know? And and it's these 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 type of revisionist things we have to now look at everything with fresh eyes, you know. Um, so there are evidences, <laughs> and I do think it was war subdued. There were still enemies of Christ even during his reign. They couldn't fight him. They couldn't. There was no war, but they certainly refused to do what he said and just didn't play ball there was that instead you know and right. the, and that's human nature rebellion is the story of humanity even yeah. even when adam and eve walked with god they rebelled and even when jesus is on earth right there ruling in front of them mankind still rebelled it's the same story you know and that, right. perhaps that's the, that's the lesson we're trying to learn here you know uh, but as soon as he left i say left as soon as he gave over to satan satan was released and had his short season and he went with his saints to, to the beloved city wherever that is um his enemies were still there and they probably very quickly took over yeah. and and someone described it to me yesterday i was talking to um someone at revolution radio revolution or revolution radio and i had him on on and he interviewed me and we talked about this and um he said there would have been a power vacuum as soon as Jesus left, and there would have been feudal war states of who's gonna, who's going to rule now, and it was king, imagine? and it was just would have been king against king, chaos, and most of the middle of the you know the middle the medieval period is feudal wars between noble houses just constantly fighting each other, and killing each other. So it's kind of you know as soon as he left, it was just chaos again, and this is why it's so hard to piece together the puzzle exactly, but it's. Who knows what the Vatican has in their fifty miles worth of vaults, for example? You know, like, and that's something else too. <laughs> the Catholic Church is. Um, I'm hearing a lot of devout Catholics just totally disown this Pope. Like there is such. I, I've you know I was raised Catholic. I, my dad is devout Catholic. I've I've never heard anything like this. Um. Maybe it's for a good reason, you know, like they're showing their hand, you know, is what I feel like is going on here. You know, like this, this new world order power grab that's, that he seems to be just totally on board with, you know, maybe we are just a couple of years out, you know, and this this is like their last ditch effort to, to, I don't don't know what they think they can still do at this Mm. point. Um, And if it's game over and, your season's coming to an end. I don't know why they don't just go lay down in the hole and cross somewhere here. <laughs> you know what I mean? But well, a cornered animal is very dangerous. Yeah, and um, they could, they do make rash decisions and and make mistakes. You know, they're not <laughs> this. It's hail mary time for them. Literally, you know, it's like what are they supposed? To, what are they supposed to do? You know, like it's kind of a, the time is time is short for them because um, it's kind of it's a, it's a lake of fire situation now. You know, yeah. uh, with the false prophet and the beast, you know, it's it's the final, it's the final, it's game over, you know, and and again, I don't know how long a little season is. I've speculated, okay, so if we, 
are the are the resurrected dead who populate this time period and we're kind of birthed into it not all at once we're birthed into <clears> it slowly you know each at a appointed time each wave of people souls go back in and have another chance to to be become conscious grow up and get to know christ and make the choice we live in a world where you can choose between christ or the devil now we live in that world you know and it's quite easy to make the choice once you're conscious and are aware of the choice and maybe it's as long as it takes for everybody to be come back and have be given that choice perhaps this is why abortion is so rife today it's to slow down that process of the people being you know reincarnated it's not resurrected is the word not reincarnated reincarnation is like an endless cycle coming back as different animals based on your karma in in in, in weird ways resurrection is the same soul coming back once once more the second resurrection there's, there's the first resurrection then the second resurrection and then there's judgment at the end of time so i'm not talking about reincarnation here this is this is biblical resurrection you know um and on that our 30 minutes is up i'm going to send you another link bo and then i'll let you see what you have to say about that comment okay so <laughs> i'll be back in one second <laughs> by the way guys thanks for the donation there i saw someone's donated for the the zoom fund i think i may have to pay for zoom because it is so much better as an interface i'll admit and it looks better as well and uh oh, it's a special offer enjoy 10 percent off your first year okay maybe i'll uh i'll get into that um but there we go does it say my next meeting starts in nine minutes oh dear oh dear oh dear um I know what I'm gonna I'm gonna go back to Skype. I reckon Skype will work now. <laughs> now he's using his phone. Perhaps Skype is the way to do it. I'll make a meeting. And I will copy that link. Start the call. I will we'll go on Instagram and I'll send him a quick message. And I will also email that to him to make sure he actually gets it. Uh, yeah, by the way, my, my emails are a mess, guys. They're all over the place. So I'm sorry for what you're witnessing there. But let me just... Um... We have to use Skype now. There we go. So hopefully we should have Bo on again in a minute guys but how are we doing in the chat let's see what's going on in the meantime let's just switch that to that there while we're waiting for Bo to hop back on and see who we've got here we've got some usual faces we've got J dreamers here as well great to see you man thanks for the uh the donation as well i really appreciate the support um still need to arrange to get you on here as well man i want to hear your thoughts on all of these things as well <laughs> um i think i sent you an email i don't know if you've seen it if you want to email me at understanding conspiracy at gmail.com um i'd love to get you on to the channel and we can just hash this idea out and you can bring your plasma apocalypse ideas into this as well and see where that all fits in because i love your work on that and i do think there's precedence for a lot of what you talk about as well um so it'd be great to get you on and uh yeah give me your thoughts on all of this um natasha thanks for being here great to see you still got hannah here as well uh, Isaac has left a donation. Thank you. I love this conversation. Round three of me giving a brother money and trying to find a truth or wife. <laughs> uh, well, well, yeah, maybe should I start a dating section on the Telegram? Shall I do that, guys? Is, is that something people might be into? I have a Telegram group with almost a thousand people in there now. The subcategories. Shall I make a subcategory just for dating? Would you guys be interested in that? You know, <laughs> let me know. Isaac, maybe that could be the answer to your to your prayers there and, and the many donations. Um, but yeah, thanks. I do appreciate that. So we've got a new member as well. well let me just uh, close this. We've got Wendy and Indy. Thanks for becoming a member. I really appreciate that. Um, I will just say, while I'm shilling for myself and waiting for Bo, um, if you do want to support me and actually have access to extra content, Patron is the way to do that. Now, I appreciate the support on memberships. I do. It's $2. Um, if you just want to give me you know, kick back a couple of dollars, that's the best way to do it. 
um, but it won't give you access to anything other than your name being highlighted and obviously stickers. Um, all my extra content is patron only, and that's $5 a month. So if you could afford a bit more, I would recommend going to patron instead. Um, you have to remember YouTube does take a third of whatever you donate to me on YouTube. But patron only take 5% because I'm a founding member apparently by chance because I joined years ago. Uh, so patron really is the best way to support me and that's the best way for you to get access to all the extra stuff. There's nothing extra really for do for becoming a member other than a visual display of support on the channel. Uh, but yeah, I thought I'd just quickly mention that guys. But again, thanks, thanks for becoming a member. I really appreciate it. Uh, my wife just posted the link to Patreon in the chat there as well. Um, yeah, I wonder how he's doing. Let's see how Bo's doing. Uh, Bo, if you can hear me, have you have you managed to join the uh, the Skype link I've just sent instead? So let's see what's going on. And it looks like Wendy just became a member of Patreon. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that. Um, I'm, get, I'm getting messages here from Bo that I need to read. And let's see if we can get him back on before my phone dies. Oh, no. I think it's about to die. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel I feel sorry for Bo. I, did, I, did, I didn't mean to lump this on him all at once. I kind of got carried away. Um uh, he's going to have a lot to think about tonight, that's for sure. I think I've just started this guy down a rabbit hole. Um, but yeah, I can't really... Oh, there we go. That's a shame, the link won't work. Um, well, you know what? I may have talked for long enough now to actually use... <laughs> to actually use Zoom again. Let's see how long I've got. Start a new meeting. Ooh, four minutes. Okay, so if Bo can hold on for four minutes, I might be able to get him back on for closing. Um, I'm not sure if he can hear me. I'll send him a message. If you can hold on for four minutes. We can zoom again. Apparently. There we go. Oh, he may have just jumped into the uh, the Skype. Actually, I think I may. I think I may have got him. Yeah, I think we got it. Let okay, there we go. Yeah, sorry about that. Yeah, apparently Zoom only lets you do it twice, and then you have to pay or wait ten minutes. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I don't know what's going on. That this sounds and looks fine here. I'll share the screen with the guys so they can see us again. Uh, there we go. And I'll get rid of this little one. I don't need a little one. Oh, Perfect. Yeah, this this so is fancy. A background and everything. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Um, technology, eh? But yeah, yeah, anyway, I'll leave it back to you. What have you got for me? Yeah. <laughs> uh, one resurrection versus reincarnation. Um, this is actually something that I've struggled with um, as a Christian since uh, so that was, a, I don't know, 10, 12 years ago. I got on the the thought of reincarnation uh, and not in the sense of coming from like, I'm a horse in this life and, you know, I was good to my master. So now I get to be a dog and get a little closer. Not like that. But as my, my thought process was always that, you know, as people, we are, you know, we're born, you know, re repeated, uh, repeatedly, you know, our souls are reincarnated into whatever body, whatever life, until we get it right, until we accept Christ, and then we are Christ-like, and then we get to go, you know, to paradise, or, or until the end, and then, you know, we're, we get to join Christ, but that's been on my mind so much, like, I've had I've, I've tried to talk about it on my show a few times. I get emails like uh, I actually had a guy said, you, you can't possibly believe this new age stuff. He said that, uh, you know, I wouldn't I wouldn't know a church if I passed one on the street <laughs> because I entertained the thought that 
we would come back until we reached a Christ-like state by having Christ in our heart. You know what I mean? But that, by accepting Jesus, and that would be, you know, like we get those opportunities until the end to get it right. Um, and I, I even had stuff that would help back that up when Jesus was like, what would I tell you? Uh, what would you say if I told you that Elijah did return and you beheaded him? You know, talking about John the Baptist. And, uh, you know, it's just hints like, and because I couldn't see anything just flat out saying reincarnation is a fact. Um, and I know that's a slippery, slippery slope, and it's a dangerous thing to think, oh, I can just get it right next time. You know, I, I don't want to get, and I don't want to lead anybody down that way. I don't want to be someone. No. So for this resurrection, that kind of still checks those boxes for me that, you know, because some of the supporting evidence I had or felt like I, I, I had for reincarnation is the fact that there are people that come back and tell you, hey, uh, I survived this experience or whatever. This four-year-old boy is talking about World War II. Or you have uh, these kids five years old and you can sit them down on a piano and they can play a piano. You know, they, it's just, it's weird. But if there is a resurrection and at some point we have experienced life and we're laid to rest and this is our, we are that remnant that, that missed or that came about after um, the rapture or whatever you want to call it. That that kind of works out for me. But that, you know, it won't be me just trying to put it into a box to mm. make myself. You know what I mean? I don't want to do that. It's, but, compl- um, it's complicated. I think there's levels to this. We just cannot comprehend as humans as well at our level. I mean, we're talking about godly concepts here. We, we don't resurrect people. <laughs> God does. And it's kind of, I'm not here for, end- I'm, I'm also cautious to go down the endless recycling of souls route. I don't feel like that's what's going on here. I feel that, like it's at God's appointed time, your specific soul and who you are is brought back into the earth for a specific reason. And mm. that's, that's resurrection. It's not reincarnation. And again, right. you talk about um, Jesus saying, you know, he came in the spirit of John came in the spirit of Elijah. And uh, I don't believe Elijah actually died. He ascended to heaven, didn't he? So right. is it, right. it's explaining how even once he trans was transliterated out of his physical form he can transliterate or resurrect back and and even he wouldn't even remember who he was john didn't even realize he was possibly elijah <laughs> do you right. know what i mean and so it's right. kind of we do have these we do forget if this is the case so how would we know there's a lot of things you have to think about here you know even for, with biblical precedents there you know that people do come back it seems in the end people have are always going on about past life regression and all these type of this strange phenomena, you know, and like I said, ki- children who can just remember things they should have no business knowing anything about. And people would say, well, that's just demons telling them stuff, you know, and, and maybe, maybe not, maybe, or, right, maybe, maybe. or maybe not, you know, we have to, everything's on the table now with this consideration. And I, I was even thinking about the NPC phenomena lately, you know, there's fake people everywhere. What if there are only so many souls? And there's actually less coming in with each cycle. Again, I, I, I don't like saying that, but you know what I'm, you know what I'm trying to say here. And yeah. but but the population is still big. So how do we? Well, maybe some of these people don't have a soul. Maybe they are NPCs. Maybe they are just a part of the program now. And there's less and less soul people around. <laughs> <laughs> as, as it goes on and if someone was explaining to me the other day there's actually a, a huge drop in population lately declining populations it's yeah. not going up anymore like right. they make it out to be and that's not just like a western phenomenon because of you know birth rates and we're talking about everywhere every culture okay. there's the, there's it's starting to decline in general you know it's not just like a predominantly western issue which is like a lot of people like to nudge it down that route don't they 
Um, so who know? Who knows? Who knows? Like this, we can only speculate by reading the word. And this is the thing: reread the word now from this perspective, and you'll start to see things that you maybe didn't make sense before. And a lot of Jesus's own language as well. I mean, I'll, I'll just shoot off some quotes here that I've got in my little document, which you might want to ponder on and look into. Um, but I've, yay, more to think. <laughs> Yeah, so I'll, I'll give you some script. I'll give you some scripture, you know, because this is what people want at the end of the day, isn't it? Um, but we have uh, Matthew sixteen twenty eight. Verily I say unto you, there will be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. That's the words of Jesus. Some of you standing here right now will still be alive when I come back with my kingdom. And people try and argue he's just talking about when he ascends into heaven. You know, or he's just talking about after his crucifixion and, you know, his resurrection three days later. And it's kind of like, no, he's saying coming with his kingdom. That's different. That's a, that's a specific odd phraseology, you know. And he repeats it again in Mark 9, 1, the exact same thing. Um, Till you have seen the kingdom of God come with power. And then in Luke 9, 27, he says, some standing here that shall not taste death till you see the kingdom of God. See the kingdom of God, you know, see a kingdom. And <laughs> so, so there's three ways of phrasing it. And all three ways of phrasing it implies you're not just seeing me come back in my glory. You're seeing a kingdom come of some kind, you know. Um, Matthew ten twenty three, When they persecute you in this city, flee ye to another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over all the cities of Israel, Till the Son of Man become, till he comes back. So it's kind of again not a long, not a long time. Again, you could argue, you could argue maybe he's just simply talking about the three day resurrection, but I don't think anyone thought he was going to resurrect, other <laughs> than the faithful, you know. Yeah. So they weren't fleeing anywhere, were they? They were mourning more than anything and just waiting. <laughs> like so, I don't think they were talking about that time period. I think, and again, that's not many cities to flee to before he returns. It's a small geographical location if we're going to go off the official narrative, you know. Um, and then there's, um, let me have a look a few. I've got, I've got loads here kind of scrambled all together. Um, in Matthew, it says, Verily I say unto you, all these things shall come upon this generation. This generation shall not pass until these things are fulfilled. Matthew 24. Um, but the end of all things is at hand. First Peter. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. It was all very sudden language, immediate language. It's about to happen in this generation. You guys live standing right here will see it. You will not die before I return. You know, when he's talking uh, to Cephas, um, and he says, you'll see me coming in the clouds of heaven. And then Revelation, the very first thing, Revelation 1.1, 1, 1, it says, things which must shortly come to pass. That's pretty that's pretty sudden, you know. He's telling John, and in in prison in the island of Patmos, these things are about to happen now. The time is at hand. Revelation one three. Behold, he cometh in the clouds, and every eye will see him, and they also which pierced him. Revelations one seven. Those who stabbed Jesus with the spear will see him. The time is at hand, not two thousand years later in the future. You know, and again, uh, these are issues for a lot of people, and people have done a lot of mental gymnastics over the past. Well, I don't know, since time immemorial, let's say people have been trying to figure out how how can Jesus say this, but he's still not returned. You know, and people have come up with all sorts of theories as to why, and denominations have been spread all throughout the earth to explain away why it's been so long, without trying to make him a liar. Or could it be that he told the truth and he right, did, he already... he, you know, and it's just as simple as he did come in the time he said he was going to come. Could it not just be as simple as that? Um, so, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. What do you think of those quotes and that that concept and that idea? Um, I think it's all that happens, you know. Do we use that as like, is this the time where we're like, oh, well, that was metaphor or, oh, wait a minute. In this particular instance, it, it's symbolic of this or that. It, you know, people will pick and choose and try to make it what they want. But 
this this kind of terminology does work. You know what I mean? It he wasn't talking about a very long time from the south. Um, especially that first one you gave Matthew sixteen twenty eight, where he says, you know, you won't pass away before the kingdom comes. You're, you know what I mean? Like I return. I'm paraphrasing, of course. Um, this is all something to look into, something to consider, and and to leave on the table. Um, like I said, I get in trouble on my show. I've had people with the um, geocentric cosmology worldview. You know, I've had people on the show that are flat earth worldview. I get so much hate from both sides, you know, from Christians and non-Christians alike, because I question science. Um, so, but I have to leave everything on the table. That's what we have to do to, to get our information, to, to gain any kind of knowledge or insight or understanding, to not be deceived. You have to take, you know, take on these other perspectives, the other thoughts. This is one more perspective uh, for me. And if how many how many scriptures did you quote here? Was it five, six, seven? Oh, there's way more. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm sure there is, and that's what's beautiful about this. Because if you're if you're seeking to find out if this is if this has legs, if this is true, get in your Bible and read it. If you're trying to refute it, get in your Bible and read it. Either way, you're in the Word, right? Uh, it, it, either way, if Jesus has come and we are in that short season and we're going to we're going to live and reign with Him forever and always after this, fantastic. If this is just a really, really compelling theory. That lines up with a lot of historical fact, uh, as we know it, um, that explains a whole lot of things that we have going on right now and in the past. Um, if it's just, I don't want to say coincidental, but if it's just in line with a lot of things, but not quite right, what really matters is another scripture I'll throw at is Romans 10, 9, you know, that if we believe with our, our hearts and we confess with our mouth that Christ is Lord, you know, we'll be saved too. And I, I think that's regardless of either side of this. If you're pro-Tartarian, uh, I don't know if it has a, an official title to this theory. I'm sure there's a, a, a common title to it. But if you're pro or against and you're going to research it either way, what matters is that, you know, we, we've given our hearts and our, our life to the Lord. So we'll be there for it on the right side of it, if, if it's come or if he hasn't. You know, I think that, that's, the, that's the biggest takeaway for me here. What What is the name of this theory? Oh, uh, well, there's the, uh, you can call it the Little Season Theory. You could call it the Millennial Kingdom Theory. That's a popular one. Um you could call it the the millennial reign theory there's there's no actual specific name some people believe well people this idea that the millennial kingdom has already come is not new it's actually very old it's called preterism that's the name yeah. given to it preterism uh, but preterists tend to believe it's all a spiritual thing and the kingdom is spiritual not a physical one that comes down and rules so that's kind of where this has a new flavor uh, this is partial preterism as well so it doesn't believe that all of prophecy has been fulfilled yet. It's partially been fulfilled. We still have the little season to go through yet and the final great white throne judgment. There are full preterists out there which believe it's all done and we're living in the new heaven and earth and it's over. You know, there's there's like full preterists that, that and and we are, you know, I don't know, living in just this this perpetual I don't it doesn't make any sense to me personally when I actually start thinking about those angles. Uh, if you could call this partial literal preterism let's call it that if you want to get technical or something like that you know it's not a because a, a millennialist believe um, we're in the kingdom we're in the millennial reign now but he's ruling from heaven it's the church age and all these type of things you know there's people have tried to make sense of it in their own ways through all throughout the millennia and the centuries past but this is like a new what this is this is conspiracy theorist christians take on the whole situation what i'm talking about here with new evidences yeah. coming off the back of the history we can now see through through the resources available 
and this is something else. So what we'll call I don't know. You could know like you you call people who talk about geocentrism flat earthers. Yeah, I guess you could call those little seasonists or little seasoners or something like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I I don't I don't know what to call this yet. It's it's pretty fresh, you know. Um yeah. relatively fresh. People will call me a praetorist for talking about these things. But I don't really. I don't think I align with the praetor. I think it, I think it's more literal than what praetorism preaches. Um, right. But that is an it is an old. There is an old name for it. Let's say so. There we go. But I mean, I mean, we we can for the last like fifteen minutes we can move on from that if you want, if possible. <laughs> if you don't want to, you know, and uh, maybe we could just talk about again like your journey to sitting here today talking with me about crazy stuff like this, for example. You know what got you here? Let's talk about. Let's get retrospective a little bit, and uh, we'll we'll put a pin in all that stuff because you need to sleep on it and soak it in. I think, and then we'll get back together and talk about it again on your podcast or something. But uh, yeah, let's talk about your let's talk about your story. Okay, yeah. uh, uh, my story. Uh well, what got me into the position I'm in of being confused. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it's one is having an open mind you know i was uh like i said i was i was born catholic uh when i was a teenager late teenager um 19 19 going into 20 or whatever i started going to a uh a little protestant church a little free will baptist church with my grandmother my, uh, i wound up giving my life to the lord right before i turned 21 I was, I was born and raised in a small town in West Virginia, very uh, backwoods is the best word for it. You know, it's just a coal town. You know, coal is king here, and that's what the that's what our economy kind of based around at that point. Um, so I was kind of sheltered as far as the real world went. I didn't have any reason to not believe the news. You know, um, f- family on both sides at that point was. You know, were the the kind of not really left leaning, but Democrat. You know, like JFK kind of Democrats. And so uh, that's just all I knew, man. Until I I joined the military and I spent some time out in the actual, you know, the real world. And uh, people from all over um, the country, but and and some foreign countries were in in the military with me. You know and they're in my daily life and I'm here in different perspectives and some stuff I didn't care about. You know, I, I was a young guy, you know, just out here doing my job. And then as I got a little bit older, I started, started having questions, you know, like, like guys do, you know, you get in your late twenties or whatever, you start looking about like, what am I doing? You know, you have those existential kind of moments, uh, this uniform, what, what does this patch really mean? What, what's what's going on here? Why are we still at war for the last eight years when we supposedly killed this guy? Uh, what's 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 the deal? So yeah. I was kind of taken under the wing of some some really close friends of mine now uh, that were in the game a little longer. You know, um, we would we would sit down in the break room where the, yeah, this is. This is pre cell phone era. I mean, phones were around, but people didn't have this kind of technology, you know, in 2006, you know, it wasn't, mm. wasn't like, um, you didn't care if you left your phone in your car back then. So there, there was nothing to, to catch you talking or whatever, but that's when I started getting the conversations of what do you really think happened on 11? You know, um, do you believe that? Do you believe the news do you believe your government um do you think that we're always the good guy that kind of conversation you know and it's a hard truth to hear man um and it, it kind of went in line with the same time that my enlistment was coming up and uh i, I had a, a series of really unfortunate things going on in my life some things were fortunate but at the time it still sucked you know mm-hmm. um that that led me to go ahead and just get out of the military and come back home. I did not get out of the military because I thought, you know, conspiracies just took off in my mind. My enlistment was up. And it's just, 
it was just one more thing that just kind of fell into the place that I needed to come back home. And uh, so in 2009 is when I finally actually got out and made it back to the house. And uh, I immediately fell into this dig for knowledge. You know, I wanted to research, I wanted to figure out what all was going on. And uh, my dad was right on board with me, man. He, uh, my dad was in the intelligence community in the Air Force. You know, he worked for NSA for a while. So he's feeding me these wild stories about things that, you know, I've talked about it on the show, you know, about uh, UFOs and aliens and recoveries and this kind of stuff while I'm, I'm coming home and I'm trying to dig up for truth. And so I'm just, my mind is just open. That, that's the biggest part of this. I've kept an throughout this. Um, so I, I hear these different conspiracy theories. I start looking for more. I start seeing what fits. Uh, I totally abandon like the mainstream media. I give up on that. I start trying to get my research and my information from uh, more common people. You know what I mean? I, you, you see enough of the narrative. It's shown to us. Why in the world are we still paying attention to that? You know, so I get onto like Twitter when Twitter was still cool. I don't know. It went through a really bad phase. <laughs> but like 2000, 2010, 2012, Twitter was a really good place to get information, man. You know, well, people were boots on the ground trying to figure out stuff. And uh, so I just. I, I took all this in, developed my theories, kept going with life. Um, I experienced a lot of supernatural things in my life, which I don't know how how much your audience listens to that kind of stuff or not. But I had a lot of paranormal experiences growing up, and uh, even throughout my military career, I had, I had weird weird stuff happen. Man, I've always been around it, and. Uh, you know, after a few years, here comes the world of podcasts. So I start hearing like-minded people. Um, just trying to put it all together, man. And uh, about four years ago, I eventually started my own show. And the reason for for starting it is I've been listening to podcasts for years. And I, I know people hate, and I, I got to remind myself where I'm at on, on your show here. There's a very popular conspiracy theorist that um, you either love him or hate him. He's very bold and he got in a lot of trouble. And, um, but, you know, I'm a fan of that guy, you know, so I'm, I'm listening to him on podcasts. Um, AJ, if you all <laughs> need to know anymore, uh, I liked where he went with 99 percent of his stuff, you know, so I listened to his shows. But then it kind of opened the door to. Oh, these, these paranormal podcasts, these guys think like I do. And then you get these mixed bag podcasts like uh, the Confessionals podcast. I loved it, man. Tony Markle did something where he he brought in conspiracies and the supernatural. And he just let it both fly. And I, I was down for that kind of thing. Um, my show has a lot of that, but I push, not well push, but I I don't hold back on my Christian belief. I'm not saying Tony does, but I'm saying mine's just kind of overt. Um, but I started listening to their shows and I was actually trying to get on Tony's show just to share my life story, you know, just to talk about all the paranormal stuff that's had, that's happened to me. And he had like a six month waiting list. And don't, you know, we all wound up having to work from home. It was 2020. Okay. So in March of 2020, while I'm waiting to be on his show, where I, I just started teaching six months earlier, we all get sent home indefinitely. Mm. They gave me this computer. They gave me Zoom to talk to my students. I'm like, man, I'm just going to try to do my own show. You know, and so I, I recorded my first season from my, my phone. I, I would call somebody on their cell phone and just record the conversation and talk to them. And uh, cause I'm, I'm with technology, you know, we can see this. I'm illiterate when it comes to technology. I, I am a, I'd rather dig a ditch than get on a computer. But I, I started getting people on here 
and I started the first four or five episodes telling my story and talking to people I know, talking to, to friends, you know, about their experiences with the paranormal. That's what I thought. I, I thought I knew what aliens were. I thought I knew what Bigfoot was. I thought I knew what happened with these world events. But the more people listened, people started wanting to come on the show. People started emailing. Uh, people that didn't want to come on the show just sending me these big, long stories about their life or their experiences or their knowledge of certain topics. And I realized I didn't know anything, man. Um, I just left it all out there. I took the stuff that I had learned about conspiracy and the stuff that I was finding out about the spiritual world. Um, because like I started this with, I got I gave my life to the Lord when I was 20. But once I joined the military, I walked away from God. You know, I lived about 15 years in the world for the world and uh, kind of limped my way back right before the big shutdown of the of the world. You know, um, it's kind of odd looking back at it now. I gave my life to the Lord. A month, two months before 9-11 happened, and then I find my way back months before the big shutdown um it's just weird it's like it's almost divine timing <laughs> but yeah I, I i start just putting this stuff together and piecing stuff like i see this person is talking about alien abduction i see this person is talking about um sleep paralysis this person's talking about a dog man encounter this person's talking about a bigfoot encounter these people are talking about the Fae. This person's talking about a DMT trip. And they they all seem like a good topic, you know, for the show. But what do they have in common other than they're all coming on the show? You know, there's there's got to be a common thread. And I even told my wife, you know, after the first season, I'm like, there has to be more to this than just collecting stories. So I started looking into the information of it what is the what is the thread here and man after another season or so i start seeing that these people they have these experiences if they have a foundation in christ um when they use the name of jesus against this sleep paralysis it stops when they use the name of Jesus during an alien abduction, boom, they're back at their house. Mm -hmm. If they use the name of Jesus when Bigfoot is behind their camper or whatever, he goes away. Yeah. There's a common thread here, and it's a spiritual world coming into our reality. Mm -hmm. that, and it's just this big, everything is real, um, and it, it all leads to a biblical understanding like a true understanding of of what's going on you know and you know, that inspired to look deeper um to look at extra biblical texts because you're getting hints and clues in your body um to listen to these great minds like dr Kaiser explain things to you you know like the supernatural world it's real um we have these demons because the Old Testament, you know, and I'm, I'm not going to go into all of it here, but it's the same bad guys from from Gen 6 until Jesus. Mm -hmm. Same bad guys. And we're still fighting these same bad guys. You know, it's a, the spiritual warfare is in the physical realm. And it's, it's exciting. It's scary. If you don't know what team you're fighting. Um, but that's that's what brought me to here, man. Um, I see this big conspiratorial agenda push for one world order, this this new world order, because it's it has to happen. You know, and as this is coming down and it's happening. There's there's these tears between the spiritual realm and the physical realm to where we're seeing whatever you want to call the ufos we're seeing these monster sightings more and more and more 
because it's all coming to a head and it's, and it's from both directions and we're seeing it all happen in real time. And uh, I don't know if we have a couple years left before the millennial reign or, or, or from the millennial in this short season, <laughs> or I don't know if we have another 200 years before we're all taken up in the air and we get to see it for the first time. I don't know, but that's what brought me here is just staying open-minded and collecting people's stories putting it up against my own experiences and putting that up against the word of God. Cause that's what I know. You know what I mean? And I trust in that more than I will the media. And, uh, it, it all just makes more sense this way. Wow. Well, that was an amazing uh, journey. <laughs> that, was, that was a great story. Um, I appreciate yeah. Thanks. Thanks, thanks for sharing that with us. Um, I mean, I think that's probably a good way to round this off and uh, I hope, that was nice getting that off your chest as a bit of therapy for yourself. Cause uh, you know, podcasters seldom get to tell their own story. Unfortunately, you know, I understand cause you, you spend all your time listening to other people talk and uh, you know, I want to know how you are personally, personally, but uh, it sounds like you, you got to the right conclusions in the end. And um, at the end of the day, I, I say the same thing, wherever you are on your conspiratorial journey, you need to quickly realize it all points back to Christ. No matter yeah. what, every time that's that's where the truth lies that's what all this is really about um and you can swim in the deep end you know for years and years and years before realizing the simple truth um but that's what it always comes back to so i think it's a great way to end it there uh, but we've gone for two hours now um before we leave do you just want to let the guys know where they can find you and um what's coming up as well anything you want to announce absolutely yeah um it's again my show is called the bump podcast it's on any and all platforms as far as uh, podcasts go, um, Apple, Google, Spotify, whatever you listen to, it's on there. Um, it is on YouTube. I've had a little bit of trouble uh, getting videos on there lately. That's, a, that's due to my own tech problems. But, yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of episodes on YouTube, at least in part. So go check it out on there. Um, it's about, yeah, I took down my Patreon. I didn't feel right about putting everything behind a paywall anymore. So everything is just open and free. If you feel like donating, there's ways to donate. And you can go on social media and find that. I'm not going to plug that here. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, anywhere you listen to podcasts, you find the Bump Podcast. And I just appreciate any and all support. Absolutely. Well, all links are in the description. Um, I think you can go buy him a coffee. I think that's the system you're using right now if you want to go uh kick a little bit towards Bo, I'm sure it'll be appreciated. Uh, you know, any support's always appreciated. And at the end of the day, this is time and effort put into these things. This is work, um, you know, and people need compensating for the work. I'll always say that, you know, so don't, you know, don't, don't be ashamed both for, for, for doing that at all. Not, I, I would never put that on you, but yeah, guys go and support Bo. Go check out his, uh, his podcast. Uh, keep listening. And uh, thanks for being here today. Um, again, sorry, Bo, for uh, throwing a spanner in the works with the whole Millennial Care Kingdom thing. <laughs> I love it. I love to learn. I love it. Yeah, and again, we'll have to connect again to flesh that out a bit more in the future once you've had some time to uh, sink your teeth into it yourself and also go and alienate all your friends by trying to explain it to them as well. Uh, yeah. So I look, I look forward to getting you back to, dis uh, to discuss that. Uh, sorry, I'm going to lose my voice here to discuss that. Uh, but thanks for listening, guys. And as always, God bless. Bless.